Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home and welcome if you're new here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my morning and my evening routine. This is also going to include what I'm making for dinner tonight. I've also thrown in some fun footage of a photography session that I did with my one-year-old grandson. I'm so excited to show you the behind the scenes of the session that we did with him. So let's go ahead and get started with my morning routine. And what I'm doing here is when I wake up in the morning, I like to make my bed. I just feel like when I walk into this room and the bed is made, that my room feels tranquil and ready for relaxation and sleep. And honestly, it does take less than about five minutes to make the bed. So why not just go ahead and get it done and feel that sense of accomplishment. All right, so as I get started, I want you to understand that my morning and my evening routines, they're put in place to help me keep my home tidy. I also want you to understand that what my morning and evening routine looks like today is much different than what it looked like when I was a mom with kids in my home. So what I would suggest that you do if you're setting up a morning and evening routine is to choose five main tasks. So five for the morning and five for the evening. These tasks is what will help you to keep your home running efficiently. So you're going to choose things that's going to help you to keep your home tidy. Also remember that if you have kids, you need to set up morning and evening routines for them also. Don't get stuck doing everybody's bed, everybody's bathroom, everybody's laundry. It's just not fair to you and it's not fair for you to take that learning opportunity away from them. So when you can, set up a reasonable morning and evening routine chart that is age appropriate for your child. If you need an example of my weekly cleaning routine, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll send you a copy of my weekly home cleaning schedule. Now I know that the majority of you have this copy, but if you don't, feel free to email me and I'll get that right to you. All right, so now I'm in my bathroom and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my hair brushed and put up. Now I'll be wearing my hair like this the rest of the day, but typically when I wake up in the morning, I just like to go ahead and brush through my hair and put it up to get my routines done. And then once I'm done with all my routines, I'll come in and I'll finish getting ready for the day. But I am gonna wear it up today because I'm gonna be doing that photo shoot with my grandson. So in my morning routines, I like to tidy up my bathroom. Now I go every other day between the bathrooms. I only have two that I need to take care of in this home. So today I'll be taking care of the master bathroom, but whatever you see me doing here today, I'll also be doing tomorrow in the guest bathroom. I think that makes sense, right? Anyways, again, this really only takes me about five minutes to complete, and it really helps to maintain the cleanliness and the tidiness of this bathroom. So you're going to see me shine the glass, um, wipe down the countertops, um, clean out the sink, and I'll also be um, swiping and swishing the toilet, and then I'll be done. Now obviously, if you have a bunch of clothing on the floor, so like if you leave your clothing on the floor or somebody's leaving clothing for you on the floor, then you're going to want to add that to the list. Essentially, your goal is to walk out of this bathroom and it be reset to how it was when you deep cleaned the bathroom in your zone cleaning. Now this is very doable if you're taking care of your bathroom every other day.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and then I'm gonna take you back into the bedroom because I wanna show you a new thing that I got on Amazon Prime Day. Now, in my personal routines, I also like to lay out my clothes for the next day right here on the edge of the bathtub. So for Amazon Prime Day, I got this air purifier. I've been looking for a good one and this is one that um, I found a few weeks ago and it went on sale, so I went ahead and got it. This is the Blue Air Dust Magnet Purifier. I like that it has this cloth cover on it and that it has legs. And it actually is called a tabletop one because you can stick something up there if you wanted. Anyways, it runs very quiet at night, very quiet during the day. The only time that it would run more loud is if I turned it on three. This is Max. So it pulls in dust and hair from the top here, and it also pulls it in from the bottom and the back. Something like this would be very good in my living room to help um, control all that dust in there. Um, I tried it out here in the bedroom first, and then next I'll take it in the living room and see how it works. Anyways, so far, I'm really liking it. All right, now we're in the kitchen and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the coffee bar area. We grind our own coffee in the morning, so it can make a huge mess if I don't take care of this every day. It doesn't really take that long, so I'm gonna go ahead and just knock it out every morning so that way it doesn't accumulate. One of my sweet subscribers suggested this rolling cart for my coffee maker, and I absolutely love it. And also, right here you see me using this little vacuum. I bought this one off of Amazon. Um, I use it to clean up any of the coffee grinds it gets everywhere. Um, I can't find this exact model on Amazon any longer, but I did find one that was very similar to it. So I'll go ahead and I'll link the um, coffee tray thing that moves back and forth, and also, the um, little vacuum that's like this one. So my goal is to totally reset my kitchen back to the way that it was when I went to bed last night. So I'm going to go ahead and put away the toaster and anything else that we use to make um, breakfast with this morning. I also need to empty the dishwasher, clean the counters, and put away the dishes that we used for breakfast this morning. All right, so in last week's video, I asked that you leave some questions that you would like me to answer in today's video. And I also have a handful of questions that I got over on Instagram. So I'll be sharing some of those answers with you here today. So this first question may take me a little bit to answer, but the question is, at this stage in your life, why did you decide to start a YouTube channel? Well, as I mentioned before, I was a hairstylist when I was a single mother. Now, this is after being a stay-at-home mom for over 18 years. Now, even though I loved the creativity of doing hair, what I loved more was being able to connect with women who found comfort sitting in my chair. I'm naturally very motherly, and I always have been that way since I was a young child. I think that these motherly instincts help me to connect with women, especially women who might be struggling. When I remarried and I moved to the Austin area, I eventually started doing hair again. But I decided after a couple of years that I was no longer happy in the industry, so I went on to study photography and I opened a newborn photography studio. Once again, I was working with women that were either pregnant 
or I was in the birthing room with them taking their baby's photos when they were being born or I was taking their newborn photos when they would come into my studio and I would have those same women coming um, every three or four months to um, take updated pictures of their babies until their babies got to be about one years old. Well, once the pandemic hit, photography became very difficult to do, especially newborn photography. So I knew that I wanted to continue in the creative field, but also my heart's desire is to support women. So I decided that a YouTube channel would be an optimal way for me to be able to connect with women who might be struggling or just looking for a way to streamline a set of routines to help them in their everyday lives. I knew that my history of doing this in my life could be helpful. So I sat down and I developed a plan and I started my channel. Now I pray over this channel and I trust that the people who watch and subscribe are those who God has brought to my channel. I know that YouTube is all about numbers and as much as I would love to meet all those high number goals, it's more important to me that I'm able to connect with people that God would have me to connect with. And I really have. I've connected with many of you and I think of many of you as my personal friends. I appreciate all your messages to me and I hope that you feel that you found a friend in me also. Okay, so in tonight's dinner, I need some black beans. Now, I didn't have any on the shelf, so I'm going to go ahead and make some fresh black beans. Now, these black beans have been sitting here overnight. Um, I soak them in water, and I just let them sit in there overnight. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to rinse them, and then we'll get everything put into the crock pot. This is another thing that I do in the morning in my morning routine, is I like to pull out what we're going to have for dinner tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the crock pot, but this will go for the dinner that we're going to have tonight. All right, so I had someone ask me what I would suggest that they do after moving back into their home, which was under reconstruction, but they still have construction workers still working there. So she says that the construction dust is out of hand. So if any of you have any suggestions for her, could you leave them down in the comment box? But I'm also gonna suggest what I would do if it were me. So if I could, I would try to put plastic barrier from the ceiling down to the floor. This way you're dividing off the construction area from the area that you're living in. I would also insist that the messes um, that can be cleaned up at the end of the day in that construction zone, that they should go ahead and clean those up. So let's just say that they use a shop vac to vacuum up every day or at least a couple of times a week. Any co good construction company isn't gonna have a problem with this if you go ahead and ask them. And it sounds to me like um, you're really going to have to stay on top of your dusting in the living areas of the home. I might also suggest an air purifier like the one that I showed you just a little while ago. I can link that one for you, but there are others out there. Um, you just have to do your research on them. I would also make sure that that family members are taking their shoes off before they're coming into the house, especially if they're in that construction area. This way, they're not tracking it into your home. I sure hope that these um, ideas help you. And again, friends, if you have any other ideas, please leave them down in the comments for her. Alright, so the final thing I do is I vacuum this rug every morning. I do this because this rug is a fur catcher and my dogs are furry dogs and they let off fur everywhere. You'll see that I have two dogs here because Madeline is in Maui, 
So I'm taking care of her black and white dog, Indigo. So there's just fur everywhere. I'm constantly having to vacuum. You see that. I also run Roomba at night before I go to bed. So Roomba does a great job. But this rug right here really attracts the fur. I don't know what's up with it. It's almost like Velcro or something. So I have to vacuum this all the time. Okay, so here's a little behind the scenes of the photo session that I did with baby Ryan um, today. So Bethany's helping me, Bethany's Ryan's mom, and she's my daughter. And um, we're gonna do his one-year-old pictures here. We also end up doing his smash cake. I didn't get that on video here, but um, these right here are the pictures that will be going on his announcements and things like that. Oh, look at mine. Ryan is such a sweet little boy. We thought that he would really enjoy doing the smash cake, but really he didn't like it that much. And honestly, most children don't. They don't really like getting their hands dirty in that cake. Anyways, okay, so now it's night, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish up these beans by adding in the last minute things. And then we're gonna go ahead and start dinner, and then we'll do my night routine. All right, so for tonight's dinner, I'm gonna go ahead and write those ingredients in the bottom left-hand corner, but I'll also put a link of the recipe down in my description box if you decide you wanna go try this. Now, this is the sweet potato taco bowl. It's the first time that I'm ever making it, and we really enjoyed it this night. Okay, so someone asked me the color of my dining room walls. Well, I had my whole house painted agreeable gray by Sherman Williams. Now, I did ask them to keep my ceilings white because I like the looks of the white um, ceilings, but I wanted the agreeable gray on all the walls throughout my home. When I cook, I like to use lots of little prep bowls. So in this prep bowl, I'm gonna be putting in all the spices that they say that I'll be using together. I also like to clean up as I'm cooking. I don't leave a lot of messes sitting around um, while I'm cooking. 
So basically I'm cleaning as I go. That way, once dinner's over, I don't have a huge mess to come into the kitchen and clean. All right, so I'm gonna cover the small pan in some aluminum foil. I'm gonna add some olive oil and I'm gonna coat those sweet potatoes in some olive oil. Then I'm gonna sprinkle about two tablespoons of that seasoning mix onto these potatoes and then I will stick them in the oven. I think I have it set at 400. I'll write it down the exact um, temperature it is, but I think it's at 400 and I keep it in there for 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna take this hamburger meat and I'm gonna go ahead and ground it up. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna go back to my cutting board and I'm gonna take two corn on the cobs and I'm gonna cut off all the kernels. Then I'll stick that over here into this meat. Alright, so while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and take all the garnishments and I'm going to cut them up and get them ready to put on top of our food once I get everything plated. Okay, so this dinner was very good. It was a tad bit on the spicy side, so if you don't like spices, I would go ahead and omit the cayenne pepper. Anyways, other than that, it was very good. Okay, so now I'm getting back into the kitchen. I've already um, put all of my leftovers into the containers. I actually do that before I even sit down to eat. I just go ahead and put it in the containers. Anyways, now I'm gonna start um, doing all my dinner dishes and I'm gonna get this kitchen cleaned up because I wanna reset it so that it's nice and clean when I come in here in the morning.
All right, so on occasion, after I wash my um, delicate dishes, I'll go ahead and I'll leave them on those drying pads to dry overnight. Now, I only do this every once in a while, but typically I will go ahead and dry them and put them away. Um, I always try to do the night before something that's going to help me for tomorrow. So if I have a busy morning, I'm going to go ahead and be sure that these dishes are put away. So that way when I walk into this kitchen, everything is nice and clean. But if it's not going to be a really busy morning and I've actually got a busier night, then just leaving clean dishes that you've already washed um, sitting out on the counters to dry, you're really helping yourself that day. So. You, you get to choose. Do you like to leave the dishes on the um, drying rack and then you put them away in the morning with your um, dishes that are in the dishwasher? Or do you go ahead and um, put everything away that night, except for the dishes in the dishwasher? I always keep those in overnight because I'm washing them at night. And then that way when I walk in the morning, um, when I walk into the kitchen in the morning, then everything is all clean off of the um, counters and everything like that. So either way, it both works, whichever one works best for you. All right, and also in my evening routine, I like to go ahead and give my sink a good clean. So today I'm gonna use the Dawn soap and a scrub brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go to town on this sink. All right, so I'm gonna use a multi-purpose spray and I'm gonna use this to go ahead and clean off the counters. Then you'll see that I'm gonna come back with a granite cleaner. I really like to use the granite cleaner because it leaves a shine on the granite. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hand dry these dishes. Now, I typically don't like to keep um, my knives or my wooden spoons wet, so I like to go ahead and dry those off the best that I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll get everything else dried and put away.
day, so the kitchen is all spick and span and ready for me in the morning. I love waking up and seeing a nice clean kitchen with the counters all nice and shiny and the sink empty. It just really makes my heart happy to see this. Okay, so next I go and I like to work on a hot spot. A hot spot is something that accumulates a lot of things. For me, that is my front entry area table. So I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna get this cleaned off. And then the very last thing I do before I go to bed is I launch my Roomba. I'm not gonna show you that here today because basically I'm pushing a button. But before I go to bed, I launch my Roomba and he will vacuum the whole um, living room, dining room, kitchen, um, hallway area of my home. He just doesn't go into the master bedroom. But anyways, that's basically my evening routine. Now you've seen both my morning and my evening routine. Remember, these are the things that help to keep my house tidy in between um, doing my zone cleaning. So I really hope that this has helped you. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. I'll see you again next week. Until then, stay blessed, my friends. Thank you.